Psychic Cop Calling. Episode 10, The Hound of the Basket Shop, Part 1. Simon is in his conservatory, surfing the cyber airwaves, when he makes contact with a mysterious aircraft. Is this Psychic Cop Calling? P for Psychic, C for Cod, is there anybody there? What's your position? Over? Position nil. Age 37. 37, did you get that? That's very important. Education interrupted. Violently interrupted. What's your name? Over? I can't read you. Request your position. What's your status? Over? Had we but world enough, my vegetable love should grow. The chariots hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie. Deserts of vast eternity. Andy Marvel. What a marvel. What's your name? Come in, Lancaster. Are you receiving me? Request your Addy and status. You seem like a nice boy. I can't give you my position. Instruments gone. Contact station Codsmore. B for Beetroot. Send them a signal. Got that? Hello, B for Beetroot. Are you all right? Are you going to try and park? The name's not B for Beetroot. It's A for Amy. No, I'm not going to land. And the car is gone. In a fire on fire. I'm bailing out presently. I'm bailing out. Take a telegram. Do you mean email? Telegram to my daughter. Tell her I love her. You'll have to write this for me. I wanted to know is that I love her very much. Always will. And that I'll be there to take the pizza delivery. Pizza delivery? I think I've got that. What's your name? Simon. Hello, Simon. Don't be afraid. It's quite simple. I've got no parachute. And I'd rather jump than fry. I say, I hope I haven't frightened you. Are you pretty? Um, you've got a good voice. You've got guts too. It's funny. I've had dozens of boys. I've had chlamydia off of you, but it's a cotcher boy whom I've never seen will hear my last words. Simon, if you're roused when they pick me up, don't be ashamed. Perhaps I could do something. Phone the AA. Report it. No, no one can help. Only you. Let me do this in my own way. I want to be alone. M m masturbating with you, Simon. Alone on the internet? About as alone as a punk in a Putin's prison. Are you in love with anybody? No. No, don't answer that. I could love someone like you, Amy. I love you, Simon. Your life. And I'm leaving you. Where do you live? On the station? No, I live in Cotstone. Good. I'll be a ghost and come and give you fellatio. You're not frightened of ghosts, are you? It would be awful if you were. You'll find we're made of stern stuff here at PsychicCod.com. What time do you get home? Well, after a full day's erecting satellite dishes, I come home around five. I have some tea, then watch the footy. I'm in the conservatory here on PsychicCod.com and stiff books most nights. This is such nonsense. No, it's not. It's the best sense I've ever heard. I was lucky to get you, Simon. Can't be helped about the parachute. I'll have my wings soon anyway. Big white ones. I hope they haven't gone all modern. I'd hate to have a prop. Where would I stick it? You could try the internal hard drive. What do you think the next world's like? Oh, Amy. I think it starts where this one leaves off, or where this one could leave off, if we'd listen to Plato, Aristotle, Sartre, Errol Flynn. I know soon enough anyway. I'm signing off now, Simon. Would you close your eyes? And imagine... Oh, Amy! I'm diving now, Simon. Reach out and hold my... Be for beetroot! Be for beetroot! Hello, be for beetroot! <laughs> <laughs> the world was coming to an end. Recession. Financial collapse. The destruction of the planet. Only a small team of people stood in its way. Daphne, Simon, Penny, Payne, and Michael Monty. Together, they are Psychic Card. By the anarcho punk comedy scene! Everything you thought safe and reliable about British comedy is about to come. 
Michael Monteith is in the Emporium, powering up his recently acquired Astral Projection Chair. Good evening, Mike. Okay, Chair Number Three. Whole universe is waiting for Michael Monteith. Time to get off this dull little astral plane in search of some celestial totty. Come on, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? Just get on with it. Well, forgive me for being so inquisitive. I know I've never completely freed myself of the suspicion <clears throat> that there are some extremely odd things about you, Mike. Well, certainly no one could have been unaware of the very strange stories, rumors about something being dug up, Mike. I never gave these stories much credence. <coughs> But particularly in view of some of the other things that have happened... Bloody things got off the rock again! I find them difficult to put out of my mind. Can't mind talk about it, do you, Hunter? Uh. But during the past few weeks, I've wondered whether you'll be having some sex... That's a projecting sex... Bloody astral chairs! About as relaxing as a piss in a cactus shop! I'm sure you'll agree there's my some truth in me. what I say. Will you just get on with it, chair number three? Everything's running smoothly. Oh, okay, my... Before you begin to take a journey oh, yes. into your own inner world. And relax. Without your helmet, you're going to find that rather difficult. Come on. Bloody secondhand astral chair! This conversation can serve no purpose. Come 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 on. Bloody Welcome to Astral Plane Dimension 4. Nothing like this has come into Rome since Romulus and Rebus. Welcome, you Michael Montaigne! Last night I ordered a pizza. I said I wanted something young, fresh, juicy, and plenty of topping. And they sent me one of Berlusconi's used condoms! <laughs> the Mafia sent Vinnie the Knife to a Bunga Bunga party. He later claimed the girls fell on his cock 39 times. Each! <laughs> Welcome, Scylla, President of the Guild of Celestial Prostitutes! Permit me to introduce myself. My name is Monteith, and this is my astral projection, and these are my exalted and perverted guests. I am a TV psychic. Most people have heard of me. My name's Scylla. I'm the whore of Rome. Everybody's here to me. Allow me to introduce you to the Lady Messalina, your challenger and the Emperor's wife. This is Scylla, Succubus, Poltergeist, and anybody's wife. I'm honoured. You're most welcome. They said you were beautiful. Such nice tits. All three of them. You are most gracious. It was sporting of you to accept. The challenge. Sporting? I say, there's no money in it. You're here for the honour, woman. Besides, you're dead. What is to defend besides your carnal reputation? Would you defend yours for nothing, psychic? Lady, I'm a professional. I work for money. The honour I gladly give to you. <laughs> what impudence. She expects to get paid. And in this ultimate and depraved fantasy. The difference between you and me, psychic, you're a snob and I'm not. And the difference between this great lady and myself is that my work is her hobby. My hobby happens to be haunting and thieving, for which I don't expect to be paid. You shall have your money, shall we say. Five. Three hundred euros. Ahead seems an odd way to describe the euro. <laughs> Win or lose, of course. That seems satisfactory. We'd better get on with it before the union collapses altogether. <laughs> Which side of the bed do you prefer? Left, right, or in the middle? Lady, give me support for my cunt and let the orgy begin, as they say in Liverpool. <laughs> Sometimes Kerry Katoon are coming. 